yeah, I've made a lot of refrigerator cakes. I had, I had one particular summer that was like refrigerator cake girl summer. I don't think I'm gonna use it. That's terrible, I'm not using that. Hey everyone, it's Anna and I'm back with another vintage cookbook. This time I'm reviewing 250 luscious refrigerator desserts. This booklet was published in 1951 and it's part of a larger series from the Culinary Arts Institute. And I happen to have the whole set right here. Oh heck, it's not small. This is the encyclopedia of cooking in 24 volumes. So you can, you know, see from the front, it's whatever size it is, but if you look at the side, like this thing is like a hulking behemoth of a binder. I am lucky enough to have all 24 volumes courtesy of my cousin Bruce, who gave this to me. I think he got it at an auction. He said he'd be thrilled for me to do a recipe from this book. I do plan to cover all of these books at some point, but I also think he was probably very enthusiastic about getting this out of his house. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really enjoying going through these recipes. I happen to have my own copy of this one already that was like independent of the binder, so I'm gonna use this. The binder itself is a little bit delicate, so I don't I don't want to disturb that. My decision to cover this particular book was, again, influenced by the weather. It's over 90 degrees out right now, so luscious refrigerator desserts sound like a great menu item. If you take a little peek at the inside cover, it actually gives you a list of the types of desserts that you can expect to see in this book. We have a whole list here, and it's, you know, some of them are pretty standard. We've got ice creams, we've got baked Alaskas, we've got meringues, refrigerator cakes. I love a refrigerator cake. But then you get a little bit down the list and you see, Mooses and Marlows, and then Mallow Bets. What is that? I've never heard of these types of desserts before. I looked into it a little bit. There's not a ton out there on these types of desserts. They seem to have largely died out. They can you know, be traced back to the 1920s, possibly before then. I think it had something to do with modern refrigeration. Just looking at the recipes themselves, it seems like both Marlowe's and Mallow Bets have marshmallows in them. The Mallow Bets seem to have whipped egg whites as well. Marlowe and Mallow Bet seem kind of like <laughs> made up kids' names or something. I'd like to introduce you to my two daughters, Marlo and Mallow Bet. Don't, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> the interior of this cookbook is mostly black and white. It's a lot of text. There's one color photograph in the center right here. But if you look at this, it's very familiar. This is on the cover and this is on the back. I don't know, I guess they could only afford to use one color photograph in the entire book. Even though the photographs in this book are in black and white, there are a few that I absolutely have to highlight. So first we have this terrifying ice cream face. Nightmare, nightmare inducing. <laughs> it says, make the shamrock of green gumdrops and the face of candied cherries. Or don't, don't do any of those things. <laughs> I don't need to see this. I'm getting really creative with the presentation on some of these desserts. If you can tell what they are, I thought they were turkeys at first, but they're supposed to be ice cream swans. Very fancy. I'm not sure that the level of appreciation from your friends and family would meet the level of work that you would have to put into these. Fresh fruit and sherbet on the hottest day. Dessert in a jiffy, prune cream. I'll skip dessert. It's not standard dessert fare for me. So I wanted to get back to this section on Marlowe's and Mallow Bets. So there's, there's a whole bunch of different ones, butter pecan, pineapple, lemon. It seems like you could incorporate almost any flavor in these, which brings us to the recipe that I'm going to be preparing today. Today I'm going to be making mocha Marlowe. I couldn't not make one of these desserts because I've never heard of them. I've never seen one, never tasted one, but Mocha Marlowe. Can we just take one second to appreciate that name? I would love it if someone would adopt that as their stage name. <laughs> Let's welcome to the stage, Mocha Marlowe. I just love it. I don't know what it is. It's something, the alliteration is very appealing to me. It just kind of like, fills your entire mouth. I mean, like talk about a luscious dessert, Mocha Marlowe. I'm really excited about it. I love coffee and chocolate flavors together. So I am very ready to make this. It does need a bit of freezer time. I'm gonna try to get it all done in one day. Let's get started. As usual, I am going to be making half of this recipe, but I will be listing the ingredients in full. In order to make Mocha Marlowe, you're going to need one ounce of chocolate, 16 marshmallows quartered. So I have a bowl of just normal sized marshmallows here. One cup of strong coffee. So this is just cold brew that I made. You're going to need one cup of heavy cream. 
and you're going to whip that. And you'll also need some nuts. I just have slivered almonds. We're going to do a little bit of prep work here before I kind of melt everything together on the stove. You're supposed to quarter your marshmallows, so that's what I'm gonna do first. I like to use scissors to do that rather than a knife. So we'll do that. I do wish they would sell marshmallows in like smaller bags because it feels like whenever I buy them, I can't use them up to save my life. I'm thinking of all kinds of things to do with these marshmallows and you can only eat so many Rice Krispie treats. <laughs> Lost one. These are all quartered now. You can kind of see that there. Next, I'm going to whip the heavy cream. As usual, I like to have everything really cold when I'm going to whip cream. So I have a metal bowl that's been in the refrigerator for a little while, and I did stick the beaters of my electric mixer in the fridge as well. Just gonna go ahead and whip that up. This looks about right. So now that I have my prep work done, I'm gonna move over to the stove and melt everything else together. We're experimenting with camera angles today. So I'm gonna go ahead and start melting the chocolate in this double boiler. This is just regular semi-sweet chocolate. Be sure to get the regular sweetened kind of chocolate and not the unsweetened kind of chocolate. So let's melt this first. I'm so impatient. <laughs> I wanna see some meltage. How's it going, everybody? <gasps> It's starting to melt, okay. I feel like once this melts, everything is gonna happen really fast, so I gotta be ready. I'm gonna see what's next, just to be prepared. Add marshmallows, coffee, and salt. I knew this would happen really fast once it started. I think we're just about done with this chocolate. Next, I'm gonna throw in the marshmallows and the coffee. Now, I always get a little bit worried when I'm mixing melted chocolate and like water or just plain liquid because it tends to seize up. So I'm just gonna start with the marshmallows first and maybe like try to fold those in a little bit before I throw the coffee in. I am gonna add the coffee now and hopefully it doesn't mess everything up. Looks kind of bad right now. <laughs> so I'm supposed to half melt these marshmallows and then take it off the heat. I also always wonder, are the ingredients we have now the ingredients that existed then? So were marshmallows different? Was anything different? I don't know. It's always fun to find out though, sometimes. This looks like the chocolate from the Chocolate River in Willy Wonka. I just learned somewhere that that was actual chocolate and cream and water mixed together and that it smelled really bad. Poor Augustus Glue. I'm really excited to try this. I feel like it's not that often that I find a new dessert that I've like never tried any iteration of. I guess I expected this to look a little bit more like thick and sticky because right now it just looks like chocolatey water. I wouldn't call this a like quick and easy recipe. I mean it's pretty easy but there's definitely multiple steps that you have to go through. Once this is all combined, I have to cool it until it's cool enough to fold in the whipped cream without melting everything. And then we have to freeze it, of course. So I think this might be like a day ahead kind of recipe. I wouldn't start making this dessert if you only have 45 minutes until dinner time. I kind of want to taste this. Did I just invent a new coffee drink? Everything is melted, or at least it looks like it. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to pop it in the fridge for a while, and then we will continue this recipe later. The mixture I just melted together on the stove is all cooled. However, according to the instructions, it says, Remove from heat and continue folding until mixture is smooth and spongy. This is neither smooth nor spongy. It is very liquid. I don't know what's going to happen here. So uh, say a little prayer for me. We are supposed to add our whipped cream and our nuts to this mixture. So I'm going to start with the whipped cream. I just, yeah, I just threw some whipped cream on the counter. This recipe has been a journey. I'm not going to tell you how long it has taken me to get to this point. We're folding. It's so liquidy. I think I messed something up. <laughs> I think I say that every time. I feel like it's supposed to be spongier, but maybe the freezer is gonna save it here. It smells amazing. If you like coffee, you would probably enjoy the way this smells. Coffee and chocolate together are a pretty winning combination. It just looks like melted ice cream at this point. I'm gonna throw the almonds in. Got just some slivered almonds that I kind of crushed up a little bit more. Looks like a melted milkshake right now. And I think all of the nuts are just gonna kind of like sink to the bottom of this. Pour into freezing tray of refrigerator and freeze until firm, stirring once when half frozen. I also discovered when I was kind of looking for more information on this type of dessert, you can freeze it and make it more like ice cream or you can refrigerate it and it turns out more like a mousse. I think I'm just gonna stick with freezing it here. I just got this little disposable loaf pan, so I'm gonna put it into this. If this was supposed to be light and airy, it, it is not. We got a loaf pan of liquid here. Well, I am gonna stick this in the freezer and check it maybe in a couple of hours, give it a stir. Perhaps we'll finish this video up today, perhaps not. Only time will tell. Thanks for sticking with me so far.
It is the next day. I am wearing glasses. Things are a little topsy-turvy. I had every intention of finishing this video in the same day that I prepared this dish. However, we had a power outage yesterday. And by the time it came back on, it was time for me to go meet my book club. Hi, book club. So we're gonna give this a taste today. I'll show you what it looks like. Kind of like melted and refrozen ice cream or mousse. So I think it's time to give it a taste. We're just gonna go right into the container instead of scooping it into a bowl. Texture is very much like ice cream. Mmm, that has a really nice flavor. It's not very sweet, surprisingly. I thought with the marshmallows and the chocolate, it would have a little bit more sweetness to it, but it doesn't. It's actually really light. I would love to try this as the mousse version by refrigerating it just to see if there's like a difference. I can't taste the marshmallows at all. Not quite ice cream, maybe a little bit lighter than ice cream. It tastes a little bit like a less sweet Jamocha shake that has been frozen, if you've ever had one of those. I would love to give the fruit flavors of this a try as well, just to see if there's much of a difference in texture or taste. I think this one is a keeper. This did have a lot of steps to it, but I think now that I know how to make it, it wouldn't be so difficult. Also, you know, filming the process of, of making a recipe does add some extra time to it. I'd love to try more Marlowe's, maybe even a Malibet here and there. I like it. I cooked a recipe from 250 luscious refrigerator desserts. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I recently hit 100 subscribers, which is huge for me. I just didn't know if anybody would watch these when I started making them. I know it's a small milestone, but to think that there are a hundred people out there who keep returning to my videos, that's amazing to me. So thank you. Speaking of subscribers, if you like this video, please think about subscribing. I try to put new content out every single week. Thanks again, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.